In this second unit, we are going to explore four examples of design models, instructional design models with a focus on, uh, on structure. In fact, this is the major part of this module. Um, uh, examples of, of, of models uh, focusing on content uh, are less various, uh, so we, we just have, can, can explain that in a, in a more concise way. Uh, this is a, the main area, I think, of uh, instructional design uh, theory. Um, first, we, we discuss uh, Merrill's component display theory, and then we proceed with models which are a bit more advanced and more recent. So first, uh, Merrill's model, component display theory. This was really a very clear, you know, um, elaboration of the cognitivist uh, point of view. So the, start point, the point of departure was, was an analysis of knowledge, of content, if you like, in terms of, 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 of uh, facts or concepts. We, we, we discussed that before, declarative knowledge, or procedures and principles, as we discussed also the, the examples of procedural knowledge. Now, Merrill's idea was that you have to, to instruct facts and concepts and procedures and principles in various ways. Uh, but you have to take into account at what level of mastery you want to bring the students. Is it just a matter of remembering facts, remembering concepts, remembering procedures and principles, or is the goal um, uh, uh, using these various types of content or even helping the students to find these various types of content themselves. So you have to define that beforehand, your objectives, uh, combined with the types of content that already results, you know, in 12 various, uh, to 12 possibilities, which makes, you know, the whole design process already a bit complicated, of course. But then you have to proceed in identifying presentation forms. Uh, a presentation form may be, in, 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 may be expository or inquisitory. Expository is basically explaining things and inquisitory is basically helping students to find things themselves, to discover things. Uh, and then you can call, uh, co combine that with uh, rules and examples and then you have four primary, as he called it, four primary presentation forms. So you can explain a rule, you can show uh, an, an instance, an example of a rule, uh, you can uh, uh, just ask the students for a rule, uh, or you can ask the students for examples uh, in order to help them to build a rule themselves. So let's say that we want to discuss the issue of uh, democracy, you can give a definition of what democracy is. You can give examples of countries with a demo democratic regime. You can ask students to just repeat or, 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 or reformulate or, or regenerate uh, the, the, the definition of, 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 of democracy. Or you can ask students uh, for examples of countries where a democ de democratic regime uh, rules and then you may help students to build up, for, for instance, in a sort of so Socratic dialogue to build up their understanding of the rule of the definition of democracy. So th the idea is that we have four presentation forms. Then there are also secondary presentation forms having to do with presenting feedback or presenting objectives, etc., etc. We won't go into that detail. But you can imagine that you have now already, let's say, for, for instance, 12 times 4 is 48 possibilities to identify and to define a unit in an instructional sequence or a lesson. The basic idea is that all presentation forms should be present uh, according to uh, David Merrill. Um, and and this, 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 this second statement here, this second assumption, uh, let's say, is based on the idea uh, that students should be active in learning and not just listen or not just being exposed to, uh, let's say, rules, examples or whatever you like, but they should also be able to inquire themselves to, 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 uh, to, to try to find out things themselves. Um, and and a, a third, uh, well, already quite a, a modern and advanced idea of David Merrill was that uh, gradually 
the the uh, the responsibility for uh, sequencing for choosing the next step in an instructional sequence should be handed over to the student. Um, so the students should be able to de gradually develop uh, develop a sort of you know uh, a learning strategy which suits his or her own um, uh, preferences in which uh, is appropriate to his or her own learning style. So there are very interesting, let's say, uh, ingredients in this component display theory, but the point of departure is, is perhaps a bit rigid, uh, which makes it quite cumbersome to work with this uh, theory. Okay, um, Jeroen van Merienboer's uh, 4C idea model, together with Paul Kirchner, he has done a lot of research in this area, has written an enormous amount of papers and, and books and all kinds of instructions to work with this 4C idea model, to put it into practice. This 4C idea model starts with the four components uh, which ha have been uh, numbered here, the learning tasks, supportive information, part task practice, and uh, the, the provision of procedural, just-in-time procedural information. Um, let's explore these four components, uh, then see how they fit together and, and, and look into one particular example. Learning tasks are again, well, first of all, they are authentic and complete. So the unit is authentic and complete. Uh, but in an instructional sequence, in a program, they are, uh, let's say, sequenced in the, in, 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 according to the principle from simple to complex. So uh, they are, uh, the tasks are analyzed in building blocks and these uh, building blocks form task classes, are task classes, and they are arranged in simple to complex. So you have the, 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 the the big authentic and complete task, which is analyzed in building blocks. And these building blocks are sequenced uh, in, uh, in, in the direction from simple to complex. Scaffolding is provided within each of these building blocks and uh, there are, uh, is a variation of learning tasks uh, within task classes, within these building uh, blocks. Uh, so you have uh, quite a complex idea already here of what um, a, a learning task is and how it should be uh, analyzed in building blocks. Okay, that's the first step. This does uh, resemble a little bit or does uh, relate a little bit to, um, to Merrill's component display theory. Then uh, there is a definition of how supportive information should, what it should be and how it should be provided. Uh, it helps uh, students during the learning process, during the, the, the mastery of these learning tasks in the form of mental models, uh, cognitive strategies, all kinds of information which more or less help the student to understand uh, what the task is about. It may be provided before learning or during learning as explanation or as feedback. It is specific for every task class and it may, of course, by the help of ICT, be enriched uh, in, in the form of, you know, uh, pictures, uh, dynamic pictures, sequences, video sequences, uh, whatever you like to enable to, to help the students to understand the task. Okay, so that's the supportive information. Then we have the practice part, the part task practice part. So we have separate practice sessions distinct uh, from the learning tasks. Uh, uh, and there is a drill and practice uh, approach. So you have to, to, to repeatedly practice particular uh, uh, part tasks in order to, to be able to, to, to grasp the whole task in the end. And there is, of course, a variety in practice items. And then there is the, 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 the feedback which is provided, the demonstrations which, have, which are provided, which are specific for each skill, whether it be a routine skill or a non-routine skill. Um, the, this, this, this kind of information is pre present when needed and it disappears uh, when no longer needed. That's the just-in-time uh, principle, the JIT principle. Okay, so now we have these four components and we can arrange uh, uh, sequences 
instructional sequences in which these components all uh, have a place. So you have here the different learning tasks we discussed, um, um, each provided with uh, a certain amount of scaffolding. Um, you have the supportive information, which is here depicted as the, the blue bars, and you have the, uh, the just-in-time instruction, which is uh, here uh, depicted as black uh, bars. So the tasks are sequenced, and the tasks may consist of, of practice sessions, uh, part task practice sessions where, you know, uh, gradually the, the, the mastery of a complete task is built up. Now, this is the, the whole idea. You can imagine that from these rather clear-cut uh, building blocks, a very complex and rich uh, instructional m uh, design may result. Um, I just give one example to give you an idea. You can further explore this in, in, the, par in, in the paper by Mieke van der Water. This is an, uh, an example from uh, the Catholic University in Leuven, where in the uh, medical um, curriculum, um, a foresee idea model has been implemented. This is a module on, pa on a patient with diabetes. You probably are not able to, to, to read everything. You can find it in the, in the paper, which gives you a very good introduction into uh, foresee idea. Uh, and in where you see the model here, you see these task classes, um, th these diagnosis and treatment, and then management and then organization of the practice and then motivational interview. These are the task classes with these various components we have discussed before. Okay, let's proceed to the third example, problem-based learning. Um, this is an example of an approach which, is, which does give more, let's say, freedom to the students. So, you may consider the previous examples as connected to the cognitive perspective, although I'm not completely sure whether Jeroen agrees with that, Jeroen van Merienboer. But problem-based learning is definitely more connected to the constructivist approach. Um, Student-centered, uh, basically uh, students learn in small groups. So it's, it's a matter of a small group learning, ideally six to ten people, but um, uh, you, uh, often because of, you know, lack of money, uh, the, 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 the student groups are a bit uh, larger. Uh, the, this kind of instructional design has been developed in the, in, in the context of medical education, particularly at McMaster's University in, in Canada. Um, already during the 80s, or uh, perhaps even uh, earlier, but it has been flourishing during the 80s and, and, and 90s, and it still is, by the way, and it ha has now been uh, spread out over uh, the whole uh, uh, the university and in, in all areas. You can find examples of problem-based learning. Uh, of course, in the Netherlands, in Maastricht University, it has been practiced uh, from, the very, from, the, from the beginning, um, uh, inspired also by Henk Schmidt and other people working there. Uh, but it is, has also been uh, applied in various other universities and, 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 and universities of applied science, so uh, for instance, uh, at uh, Erasmus University in Rotterdam, where Hank Smeet has, has been uh, the, the uh, director. Okay, um, so I said learning is done in small groups. Um, te teachers are not the people who explain everything. Uh, rather, they help students to, to use the, 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 the problems being offered as a means to develop their understanding and the mastery of uh, basic skills. So they are facilitators, as it is said, or tutors. A problem forms the basis for the organized focus of the group and stimulates learning. Uh, the problem is a vehicle, as it is said here, for the development of ki kinds of knowledge and problem-solving skills. So there is also a meta-effect in that sense that students develop these uh, regulation skills, these problem-solving skills. It stimulates cognitive processing and new knowledge is obtained through self-directed learning, SDL. Uh, just to give you an example how the group proceeds, perhaps you have been practicing it yourself, but. Uh, this is what, what it's called the Zevensprong method or the seven jump method, um, explained by Wim Gijzelaars. I've, I've included the reference here. So a group 
uh, meets uh, um, um, at least uh, two times or perhaps more. But uh, this this just explains what the 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 group um, performs during the first and the second and between the first and the second and the second meeting. So first, a problem is you know studied, terms are clarified. Uh, concepts are clarified which are not readily comprehensible then the problem is defined um, let's say uh, it's a matter of diagnosing an illness a, pe uh, a, a person um, refers to a doctor and the doctor is trying to figure out what what this man actually uh, um, has um, then the, pro the so the, the problem is defined the problem is then analyzed um, and there are tentative explanations. What might be the, the cause of a particular um, uh, illness? Um, then there is a, an inventory of, of, of explanations, which explanations can be thought of, and then objectives, learning objectives are formulated to further explore these various explanations in order to find out what the, 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 well, the, the solution or what the solutions are of the particular problem. Between meetings, uh, further information is collected through private study in the library or also by consulting experts or, or other media, which may be helpful. Then during the second meeting, the information is synthesized and evaluated and uh, tested against the problem. And then uh, there is a reflection on this result and, and, and the, 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 what, what, what should be learned from this particular case. So this is the, the seven jump method in, in a nutshell, uh, of course, in order to, to, to show you an example of how problem-based learning goes along. Okay, then the last example, the cognitive apprenticeship model. Uh, this is a model which has a clear background in the, in the constructivist approach. Um, um, in fact, it has been... Um, explained in, in a paper by uh, Alan Collins, uh, John C. Lee Brown uh, and Newman in, in, 19, in 1987, but it has been followed up with various uh, examples in the literature. The basic idea here is that, and now we are a bit departing, you know, from this analytic uh, approach to a more general pedagogical view on what uh, education should be about. People in this, in this, this um, area of instructional design were concerned about the, the distinction, the differences between the school and society. So students learn in school, they sit in benches. It is what, what, what already worried John Dewey uh, back in, 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 the, in the beginning of the, of, the, of, the 19th, of the 20th century. Uh, students sit in, ben in, 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 in benches and, and they, they just are, you know, confined to that particular very, very poor uh, uh, learning environment of, of the classroom. Uh, they should go out and they should do things which more or less, you know, uh, represent uh, the, the world at large or their future uh, professional environment, for instance. Okay, so if you want to follow up on that on these points of departure, then the, 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 the workshop uh, is, 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 is the metaphor which might be useful to, to arrange the learning environment in the classroom. So there is an expert who models. Uh, so that's the master, let's say, uh, the master uh, 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 in the workshop who shows how things should be done, the carpenter, for instance, who shows how a table should be uh, uh, um, prepared. Um, then there is the possibility of students to work on their own and, and they are actually actively participating in this workshop. They do their job and they are being coached. Uh, they are being scaffolded. So they, they, they are helped, you know, uh, very intensively in the beginning and less intensively in the course of their learning. Uh, there is an articulation and further elaboration on details. There is a reflection uh, and there is an exploration facility, you know, in, in order to, to explore new steps to be taken in the learning process. So these, these sort of activities by the teachers and the students, they together form the, the idea of the cognitive apprenticeship um, model. So the, the, the situation of the student as an apprentice 
in a workshop, not in a real workshop, so to speak, but in the classroom, which has been modeled uh, after workshops where uh, people attend to develop uh, crafts and, and, and mastery of all kinds of skills which are useful in society. Uh, there is an interesting example, for instance, uh, um, um, uh, where a teacher, uh, a, a mathematics teacher, actually, uh, Alan Schoenfeld, uh, uh, asks students to give him a problem. So he does not offer problems to the students, but the students offer a problem to the teacher, to the mathematics teacher. And the teacher uh, is, is um, uh, uh, solving the problem in front of the classroom by thinking aloud, by uh, exploring all kinds of steps which have to be taken in order to solve this particular mathematical problem. Why uh, does the teacher do this? Well, why does Alan Schoenfeld, uh, let's say, uh, give, the, uh, give this, this example? Well, he, is, he thinks that uh, sub, a mastery of subject matter is important, but uh, s uh, strategies for learning and strategies for solving problems are e as important as, as just the, 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 the mastery of the subject matter, the, the, the facts and concepts and the skills and the principles as... Uh, as uh, a component display theory distinguishes them. And what, 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 what Schoenfeld shows here is that there is so much more in the learning environment which should, uh, uh, should receive attention uh, by the instructional designer in order to create a learning environment which is really rich and helpful and thus support students to, uh, to further develop their understanding. Okay, so, so much about the cognitive apprenticeship model and also so much about the instructional models based on uh, uh, structure. We are now continuing with models based on, uh, with a focus on content.